I'm gonna start a GoFundMe for you, Chels. What? I just, I feel bad that you have that sad iPhone 14 Pro with its 48 megapixels. In 2023, 48 megapixels. I have 200 megapixels on my smartphone. Yeah. That's four times more, mm. Chelsea. Over four times more, mm. I should say. You don't even have 8K video. I have 8K video. I feel like sad for you because I think we should start a GoFundMe for your education so you cannot fall for every marketing ploy. Oh, typical iPhone user thinks they're smarter than everybody else. You know what I like? I like physical buttons. Look, I can start my camera up with just a double tap on the side button and then the camera pops right up and I'm ready to take pictures or I could jump right into expert raw. What is that? Now I can adjust the shutter speed. I can adjust the ISO, the exposure compensation, the white balance. I can manually focus. Wow. What, where's your manual controls on your iPhone? Some people like the illusion of control, but I highly doubt a high shutter speed is going to help you without adequate autofocus tracking. So let's see if all these bells and whistles are actually applicable in real life. Because I, I don't think your 200 megapixels are going to be what you think. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, what about we uh, just do a telephoto test? Like, see that seagull over there just looking stupid? Take a picture of that really dumb seagull. This is some derogatory seagull language. I have to admit, I'm not liking the way this is looking. The Samsung totally wins this. The iPhone is like an impressionist painting of a bird. Even when flying, the Samsung is way more detailed. Let's talk about other things. Your telephoto lens is sad. Apple did not even update it. It's still 70 millimeters. I have 210 millimeters and the stabilization on it is incredible like it's not all shaky like you can it it works so you just want to resign or no we're gonna let's take more pictures and let's see what your resolution is because that's what you're really bragging about it's the 200 millimeters so let's see if it actually makes a difference 200 megapixels but you're an apple person so i get that so what do you want to take a picture of let's get a picture of these houses and we'll look at the details i'll go right into 200 megapixel mode Bam. Zoomed back, we see very different processing. The Samsung added a lot of texture to the sky that wasn't really there. The iPhone did a much more natural processing with its 48 megapixel RAW file. Zooming in to find some place where the Samsung's 200 megapixels actually shows me more detail, I just can't find it. What I find is a lot of sharpening, which might lead you to believe it's more detailed, but it's not actual detail. The software is just accentuating every area of contrast which makes everything look kind of gritty and dirty. I gotta concede I just do not see more detail in the 200 megapixel files. This makes me wonder if the 200 megapixel images are even better than the 50 megapixel files so let's check. Before I even zoom in you can see the 50 megapixel wall file shows more detail in the highlights because for some reason Samsung drastically oversaturates the JPEG files. Zooming in we can see the 200 megapixel file does have more detail. But in my opinion, the detail gained by the larger file is ruined by the awful processing. Samsung users, my advice to you is to shoot 50 megapixel raw and forget this 200 megapixel dream. Here's the S23's 200 megapixels versus my Sony A7R 4 scaled to the same width. Before we even zoom in, notice how the Sony's capture the detail on the purple lights on the wallpaper. Well, the Samsung turned those lights into a big blue blob. As we zoom in, we can see the Samsung just couldn't capture the detail in this book cover. Zoom in further and the Sony shows the texture of the printing process that's invisible to the naked eye. That is what true 200 megapixels looks like, not just sharpening. The Samsung shows none of that detail. And take a picture of these faraway houses as well, just so we can zoom in and see. I'm just zooming in three times. Oh yeah, that's all you can zoom in, but I have a 10 times zoom, I, so I mean, I'm going to zoom in that I much. can zoom in more. Look at these houses in the distance. On the Samsung, you can see the individual boards in the house, the bricks on the chimney. This is what a smartphone telephoto should be. Apple should be embarrassed that they keep shipping out the same old 70 millimeter lens. And then let's just, let's do a boring test just so that we can pixel people a little bit. We'll get a picture of a sign. You get mean when you lose. Chelsea has to go retake her photos because on the iPhone, it does not capture 50 megapixels by default. It doesn't even do the option. You have to go into your settings and turn it on 
and then you have to manually turn it on every time because they know like it's not even worth it. Okay, so let's take raw photos so we can test the dynamic range because mine has a 30% longer photo cell walls or something, which makes it better. I'm gonna open up my expert raw app, which gives me full manual controls. And then we can do these backlight signs here. Wait, what the hell is this? When I'm in raw mode, it only goes to 50 megapixels. It doesn't give me 200 megapixels. Why is there not 200 megapixel raw? Like, isn't that the point? Whoa. What's your shutter speed at? Oh yeah, you can't control your shutter speed. <laughs> Sad. Sad, you don't even know. Zooming in, both smartphones show the same amount of detail, but the processing is very different. The iPhone image completely lacks noise, while the Samsung image is still way over sharpened again. But these are raw files, so we should be able to fix that. But I can't. If I completely turn off sharpening on the Samsung RAW files, it's still over sharpened. Samsung is baking in all the sharpening into the RAW file, which really defeats the purpose. The iPhone produces better, more flexible RAW files. That's a win for the iPhone for me. <laughs> Look at her trying to take a picture of that seagull wildlife photographer there. I zoom with my feet. Look like a French fry. Look like a French fry. I'm getting a k footage of her so i don't even need you anymore frank what are you doing with your does that does that camera even have 8k uh no we're 4k oh sad you you got me beat you're I'm making gonna, me sad i'm gonna have to get a gimbal for that <laughs> i don't need that bitch ass phone let's take some selfies and see how that camera is i think we know who's gonna win that take a mean selfie i don't know what she's talking about okay we're gonna take selfies together okay no <laughs> Oh, I pushed the wrong button. Those, those physical buttons. Oh, whoa. Why does my hair look like I'm a televangelist? Okay, let's take some okay. front lit. Okay, where's your sad phone? Okay. You want me to take the selfie because you got little T-Rex arms? <laughs> yeah, actually. Wow, we look so much better on my phone. Oh, please. Let's do backlit. Oh, wow. It exposed way better for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we know which camera won. In front-lit situations, the Samsung's processing is more natural and neutral, while the iPhone is a bit oversaturated. Here, the iPhone completely ruined the red fabric, overexposing it and just losing detail. This is garbage, so a win for my Samsung. In backlit situations, the iPhone boosted the shadows and contrast more, creating a brighter image. The Samsung had a more natural, neutral processing and did a better job of retaining details and fabrics. It's just a matter of preference. Let's try to get some macro shots and see which camera's better at that? Okay, so we need something small and insignificant, like your self-esteem after losing all these tests? <laughs> I was thinking like a seashell or something. Oh, we could do that too. Do you want to do it in the sand? They both look good, but I think mine is a little bit clearer. Look at the details here. I think so too, and also the out of focus parts of the picture look much nicer. Oh, like you have round yeah. bokeh, whereas mine's all kind of yeah. squiggly. Yeah, mine looks a lot better. I win this one, hands down. Okay, so for people who want to take super close up pictures of seashells. Everybody, right guys? <laughs> Let's take a video with our main lenses of that flag and the power plant out there. Tests are stacked in your favor. I'm noticing yeah. a lot of zooming tests I'm noticing. <laughs> Okay, get the waves in the foreground. It's gonna be beautiful. I mean, mine's gonna be beautiful. My Samsung's 8K video should have four times the detail of Chelsea's 4K, but looking at it in my 4K monitor, I don't see any difference. Let's zoom in 800%. Oh, my Samsung video is way over sharpened, but maybe it shows a little more detail in the reds of the flag. These both have action mode that will stabilize you like a GoPro while you're running. So you wanna turn super steady on? Okay, ready? Yeah. Go. That was so smooth. I don't actually know. Let's look at the footage. Oh damn, mine looks good. You say that about everything. Whoa, mine looks like it's drone footage. It's so smooth. Yeah, I think yours looks smoother. I've also practiced running like a gazelle. <laughs> you got gimbal legs. I got gimbal legs, yeah. <laughs> I mine won that one for sure. Wow, and that's a really useful feature. I've got to say. Oh, this is the most important feature. The one thing you win. <laughs> Having really stable video footage just makes the difference between a professional looking video and just amateur crap nobody wants to look at. 
so that wow my whole camera is better so the last test that we have to do is portraits and i think that we should do them front lit and back lit and see what they look like okay i know i'm going to win this one because the apple always creates some awful skin tones well we're, we can shoot in raw no you can't because the portrait mode blurs the background artificially that's not available in raw mode well i could take a portrait without portrait mode okay we'll do it both ways you can be the model <laughs> <laughs> i feel like you're what say it <laughs> what do you feel like in your phone and this is how you turn on raw mode in case you don't know since you've been i know how to turn on portrait mode right no <laughs> This is the only way to make it fair. Whoa, mine looks so much better. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, for real. Look how mushy it made my skin tones. You can tell it tried to lower the highlights and raise the shadows, and it made my skin look mushy, gross. How does it handle that? Oh, light? God. This one sharpened everything, so my pores... That's, you, that's yours, good. though. Yeah. I, they both look bad. In the front lip photos, my iPhone portraits look way better. Zoom in and check out the fake bokeh. Foca, if you will. The iPhone blurs my ears, my hair, it even kind of gradually blurs my cheek in a very similar fashion to my 85 millimeter F12 lens. The Samsung butchered the bokeh transition of my flyaways of my hair, while the iPhone's transitions are natural enough that you might not notice them, especially if you're not a pro photographer. Big win for the iPhone. In this backlit portrait, the Samsung is the big winner. Okay, the iPhone has better skin tones, and for some reason my Samsung made her glow, but look at the bokeh. The iPhone completely botched this, while the Samsung created a nice, smooth transition. While we're here, why don't we try the cinematic video modes where they do that same bokeh, okay. but with video. Okay. In the portrait video, cinematic video test, as far as I'm concerned, they both lose. The fake bokeh does not really hold up to any close inspection. It's okay at a glance, though. Nobody wins that one. Okay. But I think I won all the other things. No, and I think I'm going to win true. the next test, What's that? which is night photography. So we'll have to wait a little while. Okay. I don't feel like you won everything. <laughs> okay, uh, what's next? Night photography. Apparently losing impacts your short-term memory. Now, cool transition. Even zoomed back, we can see way more stars on the Samsung's 10 minute exposure. Zooming in, we see the iPhone stars are shaped like lines more than dots. This is star trails, which is the stars moving across the sky caused by the rotation of the Earth. The Samsung's exposure was 20 times longer, so those lines should be 20 times longer also, but the Samsung uses computational photography to track the movement, stack the images, and cancel that movement out. For evidence of this, notice the stars disappear behind the tree. The Samsung couldn't track their movement behind the branches, so they disappear. You can see the stars behind the tree branches on the iPhone's simpler 30 second exposure, however. In summary, the Samsung S23 Ultra is the greatest smartphone camera ever made. 210 millimeters, 200 megapixels, I think. No of beauty. way, because I know that you actually put those photos side by side with an actual 200 megapixel photo. Did it have the same resolution? It, the, yes, the file size is the same. That's not the question. You had a huge file size, but was the resolution of the photo as good as a 200 megapixel photo? Okay, you're making the point that we measure detail in megapixels, which isn't accurate, because you could take a 5 megapixel file and just blow it up and you'd have a big file. And they're, they're doing some of that with the marketing. I definitely don't see a noticeable improvement. N no, it may be in, if we were to measure the detail, both these cameras would probably be like eight to 10 megapixels of detail. Yeah, but at least yours is sharpened to an extreme level, every single photo. Oh, the post-processing sucks on both of them, but I, I agree. They need to give us the option to just dial that sharpening back. Don't bake it into the raw file, certainly. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that the iPhone photos are already processed in a way that's not that pleasing for a photographer, but it's like, Yours was like, hold my beer. I could make it even worse. It's so over sharpened. Yeah, it's a problem. I, maybe consumers like that, but they need to appeal to the pros too. So even though yours is boasting about those 200 megapixels, I think image quality is pretty much a wash. Do you agree with that? Uh, not if you go telephoto. No. But yeah. in, the, in the other ranges, like up to 70 millimeters or so, 
it's a wash. I'll give you the telephoto part, but I will say that the iPhone system has things that make being a photographer easier. One of them being the MagSafe, which, you know, it's easy. It's magnetic. You can put it on the dash of your car. But what I like to do is put it um, as a field monitor when we're doing video. So we put it on there, we clip it on there. And that's just very practical. I, but I have this cool, like, clampy thing, which you just, like, stretch it out. And then you, every time you want to take it off, you... Yeah, you're right. I wish I had MagSafe. If you're in the iPhone system, I know that there's like this fanboyism and some people hate it. But if you're in the system, it makes our life easier. I get to airdrop some video and pictures right to my laptop where I'm editing in Final Cut and I can just pull it right into the timeline. It's or super if you're easy. in a circle of friends or even doing professional portrait work, like you snap a picture with your phone, people want you to airdrop it to them. And at least around here, 90% of people have an iPhone. So you couldn't do that with an Android phone. It's about the system. Apple locked you in because you bought a Mac and you bought a watch and now you're locked in the system and now you don't get to pick the camera that you want because I'm still going to be an iPhone user, but I really want that 210 millimeter telephoto. And I know you want it too, but Apple won't give it to you and you don't have any say in the matter because it's mon monopolistic behavior. Okay. In the comments, I want to hear what smartphone camera you're using and which you think is best and what you want us to review next. Yeah, what should we put up against both of these? I'm curious if there's a better smartphone camera. Maybe so, the Google Pixel? Maybe. Subscribe to see those reviews and lots of tutorials coming up completely free. Bye.